So we are now on the Android Debug Bridge tutorial. So of course, it is a highly versatile command line tool that lets you communicate with the device. So it could be any Android device running on different kind of manufacturers. And of course, there's a lot of actions and options for you to do and commands and features that you can run directly from your computer's terminal all the way injecting instructions into the mobile device. So of course, there are three key components, a client, a daemon, and a server. So we will go through the tutorial of all three of this. So make sure that your Android device is already connected into your computer using a USB line. So once you're in, we can actually go into terminal and all you got to do is enter ADB to make sure that you have ADB installed. So in this case, once I hit ADB, I'll be able to see that I actually have all the commands, all the modules installed. So when you hit ADB, it will show up the help page. So you can see all the commands of it. So we will go through extensively on quite a number of them. That's really useful and helpful in terms of managing Android devices. At the same time, also, if you are a programmer or developer and you want to look at what are some of the libraries already available on Android by default, you want to use some of the features inside the phone, this could really help you in accelerating the pace of understanding what's going on in the Android device and what you can do to actually manage those Android devices. So moving forward, of course, the couple of really interesting things that we want to look at is on ADB. So once you hit ADB, enter ADB devices. And this would actually show all the devices attached to your computer. So in this case, I got one device attached. And of course, once you have the device attached, you can actually go ahead and issue commands into the Android device once it is connected. So one of the commands that we can actually use is to actually look at what are some of the information or the shell that we want to put into the system. So when we enter ADB shell, this would actually bring us into the Android device. And when we enter, say, ls-l, we can see that we can see all the directories, subdirectories inside the existing working directory. So we enter pwd. So as I have mentioned in many tutorials, Android device is like a Linux variant or Linux distribution. A lot of the commands actually come out of box with it. So let's say we enter into cd sd card. We can enter ls-l so we can see all the other information here, all the subdirectories. So even on the left side, you could see that there is an indication of directory, the read write access and the ability for you to look at owner group and others in terms of the permissions to execute, to read and to write into those subdirectories and files. So this is really helpful. And if you want to see all the lists of commands that you can actually use on, you can enter ADB followed by shell ls on system slash bin. So this will list down all the commands that you can actually issue out inside your Android device. So this is really helpful. And in future tutorial, we'll actually look at how we could start up services. So we could actually kind of convert your Android device into a server and the server could run multiple services. And if you see some of the commands that we can see here directly, we will be able to see a lot of other key capabilities. And one really important one that we'll be using a lot in future tutorials would actually be on Netcat. So Netcat is available over here, as you can see. So Netcat is going to be one of those commands they'll be using to boot up services, to interact separately from the Android device debugger or Android debug breach. And over here, there's a lot of other capabilities that you can look at in terms of managing the Android device. So moving forward, we also want to think about how else we can actually manage the Android device. So there is a activity manager too. So Activity Manager can actually help us see what are some of the information running inside the system and we can monitor and so on. So all you got to do is actually enter ADB, Shell, AM and followed by all the other commands that you can see from here. So here we can actually see what are the items that you can key inside AM. So it is a activity monitor. So we can look at profile, dump, hip and so on, profile start and all these other capabilities to actually help us manage some of these services or the activities inside the Android device. So of course, moving forward, we will also be looking at PM, which is a package manager. So all you got to do is enter ADB, shell, PM, and of course you can enter list packages. And when you enter list packages, it will list all the packages currently inside the Android device. So of course we got Samsung, we got the Google, we got a lot of other information we got captive portal login and so on so all these are the packages that are already available inside your android mobile device and of course we can also look at permissions we can list features so instead of listing packages we can enter list features 
to see what are some of the features that's available inside your Android device. And when you are coding out a mobile application, you can actually see or use like fingerprint, motion recognition, and so on as part of your mobile application development. So you know that majority of Android devices would have such features available and you can code them out in your mobile application. Likewise for libraries, so when we list libraries, we can actually see what are the libraries available that we can actually leverage on as you build your mobile application. So over here we can see like key store, S camera and so on and rotation. So all these are actually really important in helping you find out more about how you can manage many of these libraries. And of course, moving forward, we can also look at the device policy manager. So when we enter ADB shell followed by DPM, so this is the device policy manager. And of course, there are specific policies, so I'm not going to change any of the policies inside my current current mobile device. So here we can see, we can set the active admin, device owner, profile owner, and so on. So again, do try them out, or if you want to look at security locks, for security locks, and you'll be able to retrieve all the security locks directly inside your mobile device. And of course, that's also a key capability in terms of taking a screen cap. So all you got to do is enter shell, ADB shell, screen cap, and then we can say we want to put the screen cap inside SD card. So we can put slash SD card and then we can call it screen cap dot PNG. So once you do this, it will take a screenshot of the screen currently and we can actually do a pull of the file. So we can enter ADP pull slash SD card slash screen cap dot PNG. So once you hit that ADB pool, this would actually download the file directly into your desktop or your current working directory. So here we can see that the file is empty. So which means that it is actually a blank. It's a locked screen. So what I can do is I can do it again, but this time around I unlock the phone. And once I unlock the phone, all I got to do is issue out the command again. And once I issue out the command, I can actually do a pool again. And of course here we can actually do a pool. And of course, this time around, I can do a pull and we can update the file again. And in this case, once I open it up, I can see that we got a screen capture directly. So this is some of the ways that you can actually manage the Android device. And this is it for a basic tutorial on Android debug breach. So do like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of all the upcoming exciting videos that we have running for you.